Hey, what's up guys? So today let's talk about some considerations for mounting your LPVOs with dots on top. So going through a couple things, I know I've made a video on the, the two different ones where there's one offset to the 45 or 33 or whatever, and you have the 12 o'clock versions. Now I tend to, to veer towards the style or sitting at a 12 o'clock for a myriad of things and we'll kind of talk about them throughout the video. But talking specifically on the mounts that I use to do this and some of the considerations that I take into play when I go mounting these things. So first off, uh, as you can see, both these are two different optics, two different mounts, two different dots on top. They're completely different setups, but at the same time, they're relatively similar, right? I, they're they're uh, in, in the same realm of style of shooting that I like to do. So on the left here, or on my left at least, um, I have the Vortex 1 to 10, the Gen 3, um, which I've been shooting for, I, I would say about three, three and a half, maybe four years at this point that I can't keep count of. Um, and it's almost lived its entire life. It was in a Geisley mount for the beginning, but it's almost lived the rest of it in this spur mount. Um, this is a spur SP4026. It's a really good mount. I've been very happy with it, but one of the things that a lot of people don't realize um, with the spur mount, or at least this one, is how how small or how short it is. So you can see the spacing there is really tiny. Um, it is a one two six height mount, meaning it's one two six above the rail, and then you add another one two one, I believe it is, uh, from bore. And don't quote me on that number though, because um, <laughs> I can't remember off the top of my head. But uh, but then it sits my optic at a really good height. It's lower than an absolute height, which is 154. Um, and for some people, they consider 140. But 154 is usually the standard height that most people put their optics. And this sits a little bit lower than that. I prefer that. I think it's a lot nicer for, for uh, cheek position, shooting in general when I'm trying to shoot uh, for distance. It is not nice for night vision. All right, I can't get behind this thing very easily, um, which LPVOs, uh, that's a whole different video, but it is possible, just harder to do. And then what it mainly does is sit my dot a little bit lower. It sits it to more of a, it's closer to what would be on a Unity mount, like the Unity Fast mounts that I use for my red dots at one two two or 226. So if I'm able to do that and get it closer, then I can be a little bit more on the side of, I would say like, efficiency across the board right there's consistency across all the rifles or most of my setups at least and that way it becomes a, a similar feel it doesn't feel weird when i switch over to this uh optic setup now when uh when i like or the reason i also like getting these a little bit lower or as low as i possibly can is so that they become more of a scope right some some of the times i'll keep it on one power and the considerations for that, right, when I'll keep most, most of these on one power, is that I'm gonna turn this on to use this as my white light uh, available optic, and I turn these on to what would be a passive optic brightness. And that way, under night vision, I could use these with passive use, and then when I need to use white light, I can just push under and work with my LPVOs. Um, some people don't like doing that. Some people don't like doing two different brightnesses and all this other shenanigans. I mean, you do you, man. You, you do whatever you want. You can set it up however you want. That's just something that I do or some of the considerations that I take into play. Now, another thing to kind of think about too is when, when looking at these mounts, right, over here on my right, this is a Geisley mount that they made for, I forget who it was, but some kind of competition shooting team that wanted, <clears throat> excuse me, lower mounts. And this is at a 131 height. <clears throat> excuse me. At a 131 height. Now that 131 height isn't as low as the 126, but it also still provides me a really low mount, once again, to lower my red dot as well. It doesn't really affect me face-wise on the gun all that much, but if you got really big face or cheek to eye distance, I don't know what that is considered, uh, but uh, if, if you have that, sorry. But if you have that, that may be something to kind of think about. Lastly, right, or I'm sorry, second to last, is your consideration for your red dots on top. Now, if you look at the Geisley, I use both Geisley mounts and Reptilia mounts with the Reptilia ROF mount on here. Um, the ROF mounts are pretty solid. They do a really good job. 
but the dot that I put on these things, you want to think about very heavily because when going through the process of zeroing, I like to zero my optics for 100 and my red dots for 100. Well, if you're using a red dot that has very gross uh, adjustments, meaning you don't get one MOA or, or, or smaller when you adjust at 100 yards, uh, you may or may not be getting uh, a really good zero. So some optics aren't going to give you that. Um, some optics will give you one MOA or like the acros are half. So I'm really happy with that because it makes it a lot easier to zero at distance. So something to think about. But, um, but with these optics, notice I started using more closed emitters up here. And that's because the rifle is exposed to the elements quite often, right? Like in a dusty environment, rain, all sorts of stuff. Uh, when using an open emitter, I found that I would get a lot of that debris easier than I do on a handgun. Um, for whatever reason, maybe it's just because it's exposed more or because I lay my rifle down on the ground. I usually don't do that to handguns. Handguns go back in holsters. So there is some kind of protectiveness to them. And then handguns are usually concealed, right? So they give me a little bit more versatility when protecting my lenses. But for an outer lens like this that's exposed all the time, uh, I found that the closed emitters are going to be really useful. Now, um, I, I have two 509Ts. And I'm sorry, three 509Ts, and all three of them that I've tried don't give me fine enough adjustment. So it may just be my three, or because it's a small sample size, or just maybe all of them that don't give you that easy 100 yard zero adjustments. Um, it usually hops around way too wide for me. So at 100 yards, I may be shooting for this inch square. And for whatever reason, I shoot it and it lands over here. And then I dial left and it ends up over here. So it doesn't give me fine enough adjustment and I have to zero those at 50 yards. Now, a 50 yard zero on the red dot ain't a big deal, but I do like stretching it as far as I can. And I do like zeroing them at the same distance. So just something to think about and some considerations to take in there. Now, last reason why I like having a lower height mount for or lower style mount, so 154 or lower with these optics, is because if I go to use a thermal, right, some kind of thermal in whatever way, I usually clip these bad boys on in front of these. Well, if I clip this on in front of here, it only sits slightly high, it's not a big deal, it doesn't change my offset too much um, because the optic sits a little bit lower, but the 154 heights, these are made for. So they sit properly when, when going through that process. So clip on night vision and clip on thermals will be really useful or still useful with these LPVOs versus the other way around where you mount it higher and now you have to put this on a riser as well. Not wrong and not impossible and not like the end of the fucking world, but it is something to kind of consider and make sure you kind of put into play when mounting optics a little bit higher for yourselves. So. Overall, guys, if I was not going to put a dot on here, these optics would probably be a little bit higher, uh, depending on my use case that I'm going to make for them, right? So uh, the rifle and the optic, what are they going to be used for? Uh, for the most part, these are both used when I'm using night vision, when I'm just shooting uh, in general. So from 600 and in, and I'm playing around and I'm having just a good time. Um, when I'm doing just close-up stuff I mean you can do whatever you want but you could also use these LPVOs at higher mounts and use them similar to red dots not exactly like them I would say they're never going to be exactly like them because just the tube aspect of it gets in the game right it's it's very big it's very long and you have to mount them really well to get really good movement or shots with them and then moving and transitioning with them is is definitely a practice sport but they will never be faster than a red dot in my opinion and no matter how many times i've put it on a timer i'm still slightly slower with an lpvo now that slightly slowerness it doesn't really matter up to you so something to think about guys a lot of uh, little considerations there hope that made sense and kind of gave you guys some some uh, insight um, and then because people are going to ask uh, this is Acro P2 this is the MPS this is a Steiner T6XI which is the one that I helped make a reticle for um, this is the the Gen 3 Vortex Razor which is that 1 to 10 and Spurs mount is a SP4026 with their Acro height mount um, I don't know what the 
nomenclature on that is. And then the Geisley mount that I got is their really low mount. I forget who they made it for, but I don't know if it's even available anymore. But it's a 131 height and the Reptilia ROF mount that they make for the Acro and MPS is on there. Um, so hopefully that covered everything. Oh, uh, two different colors because I couldn't find the same color. So I just got the clear anno. And then two different colors because this was a prototype at a certain point when I was playing around with it before they started producing it. So hope that helps, guys. Uh, once again, like if you have any questions, put them below. Um, and if you have any ways that you like kind of going through these and you do or you like using or considerations you take into play, go ahead and put them below. Maybe they help somebody else too. All right, guys. Take care.